Good morning, class. How are you? Today we are going to discuss entity enhanced entity relationship modeling, which is a continuation of last week's um, relationship modeling. So today we are going to discuss the most important thing here is discussing specialization and generalization. And of course, when you're talking about specialization, there are two aspects. One, issues of, of uh, you're looking at um, superclasses and subclasses, and also you're looking at having attribute and relationship inheritance. So the most important thing here when you're talking about um, enhanced entity relationship modeling is the fact that you can have inheritance. Inheritance can apply both on attributes and the relationships that any given entity is participating in. So today we are going to look at one, removing all aspects that are not acceptable in the ER modeling. So when you're looking at EER, enhanced entity relationship modeling one, this first bullet does not necessarily apply to enhanced entity relationship modeling, but it can apply to <coughs> entity relationship modeling, but not enhanced. What is most important in enhanced is identifying and adequately representing uh, specialization. And of course, we are going to look at these different aspects. So these unacceptable aspects of ER modeling, I insist that uh, of ER modeling, we have basically, there are many, but we have these five that we are going to demonstrate. A many to many relationship, a composite, multi-valued, cyclic relationship, and a tertiary relationship. I think you still remember how we identify many to many relationship. But I can, um, we shall, we are going to see how we do it. But um, a many to many relationship, how do you deal with it? How do you eliminate it in ER modeling? We eliminate ER, we el eliminate many to many relationships by one, introducing what we call an associative entity, which sometimes refer to as a weak entity. So you break them up such that you create a one to many relationship and then you create. Um, an associative entity. It's like a, an entity that is going to join these other two entities that you have created, such that you have what you call an associative entity. We are going to see how we do that. And then we have composite attributes. I demonstrated to you how, what composite attribute, I explained to you what composite attributes are. Remember we said that a composite attribute is that particular attribute that has different components that are attached to it. For example, address. An address can have email address, postal address, physical address, etc. How do we deal with composite attributes? We eliminate the components of the comp we eliminate the composite attribute and we only record the components of the composite attribute. And by recording the components of the composite attribute, remember we want to achieve one thing. We want to make sure that all attributes are atomic. And by recording the components, then you are making your attributes atomic. Then we have multi-valued attribute. A multi-valued attribute, remember we said, is that particular attribute that has many values attached to it. For each, for each given instance, you have many values that are attached to it. We gave an example of a phone, a phone number. We also gave an example of academic qualification. So how do you deal with multi-valued attributes? Multi-valued attributes is you create a weak entity for that particular multi-valued attribute such that you have a resultant entity that is going to be referenced to the parent entity. We are going to see how we deal with this. Then we have cyclic relationships. How do we eliminate cyclic relationships? We eliminate cyclic relationships by creating an entity along the relationship type along the relationship type. Remember, last week I mentioned that there are instances where you will have an you will have an entity along the relationship type. So this is another this is an example of when you can have an an, an entity on the relationship type. But remember that entity is always referred to as a weak entity. Then you have the tertiary relationship. You remember that with tertiary relationship, you have you have um, a ternary, quaternary, and then you have tertiary. Tertiary is where you have n number of relationships in, in a, uh, participating in a given within within given entities. So what do you do? You break them up by creating uh, binary one to many relationships to represent those uh, entities. So well, by doing this, you are partially translating an ER model into an EER. So um, to represent this, to represent this, I can, um, let me go to my visual. Yeah. So to represent this, let's assume that you have this entity. Okay. Um, remember, we are going to we, first. We are dealing with uh, many to many relationships. So let's assume that you have this entity called student. 
okay and then you have an enter called student and then also you have an enter called course now an enter called student has has the registration number which is a primary key remember for each and every particular entity you have got to have a primary key because it is the one that uniquely identifies a a a, a record in a what in the um, in a relation so this also has a date of birth and then we have this is a student entity and then we have the course entity the course entity has a primary key which is the course code and then we can have a course name and then we can also have um let's say you have an let's say a program where this course belongs okay which is a pro code in here then so first and foremost to represent if you're using a basic a basic er to represent this many to many relationship you let's withdraw this relationship to create the link between these two entities oh sorry okay so we need to create the link to establish the relationships between the between these two entities okay then um we have got to so a student uh, we could do this and extend this a little bit to side and then we have this such that we can have a wider window for us to be able to demonstrate our our uh, model okay so now we create um we need a uh -huh. So what we're going to do now is to have a relationship type where we're saying that a student enrolls for a course. So you have a student here who is going to enroll for a course. Okay. Enrolls for so um now a student can enroll for one or many courses that is very true because right now you can you're doing dim you're doing internet programming you're doing quite a number of a number of courses so what we have here is we have a student that is enrolling for a given can enroll for one or many courses and No. A student can enroll. No, this 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 entity this multiplicity is for this. A student can enroll for one or many courses, and a course has one or many students. Okay. So when you look at those two multiplicities, um, this is a many to many relationship because we say that when you're looking at a many to many, how are you in position to identify the binary relationship that exists between two entity types is by looking at the cardinality of that multiplicity. So we said that the cardinality of a multiplicity is this that you see at the extreme right hand side of your multiplicity. And what you have on the left hand side of your multiplicity is what we call participation. So now this is a clear indication that these two entities are have a, a many to many kind of relationship what have we said we have said that for many to many kind of relationship in order to in order to resolve it you need to create another entity which is going to be a weak entity but in most cases it's called is referred to as an associative entity so that associative entity is going to have um that associative entity is going to create what we call a many to many relationship that between these two entities so you're going to uh you're going to call it let's say student course 
And this, this associative entity, which again we say is a weak entity, will have um, will have a primary key of the other, and the primary key will have this goes away. It will have the primary key of student, and then it will also have the primary key of of course okay to create a composite primary key but this composite primary key doesn't because these two have to reference this this particular this particular relation so this becomes a foreign key okay and then also this one becomes a foreign key because it has got to reference the other primary table so then we break this relationship we break it off Okay, such that you create another, you create now a new relationship between these two entities. Okay, those two entities. And then this relationship is a one to many. Oh, this is not supposed to be an arrow. These are supposed to be lines. Okay. Okay. So now this is a one to many. So we bring this. This we bring it here. Control V. So this is going to be there. And uh, this is going to be a one to one relationship. Control C. Control V. So we shall have a one to one here. And we shall have a one to one here. Okay. Then we remove this to goals. Then we can put any rela any relationship type. Okay, we have it here. <coughs> control C, Control V. Then we can also have another one here. Then uh, student enrolls course. And then we can also put um, control C, control V. You can you can find a relationship type to put there. So this is how we resolve a many-to-many -many relationship. Now it ceases to be a many-to-many -many relationship because what is acceptable is to have a one-to-many, a one-to-many kind of relationship. So that is how we deal with many-to-many -many relationship. If you have, we have said that you have to deal with many-to-many -many relationships, and then you have to deal with um, uh, composite attributes. So in the in is um, if we are to take the previous example where we had um, address. Initially, where we had, if I'm to take this a little bit up, and control C. Um, if I'm to take this this side, okay. Again, just for demonstration. Um, I want to add something. So we put this here, and then let's say you have address, and we said address is a composite attribute, and remember we said that um, previously that you indent to the right for all composite attributes. So if in this case, where you're having address as a composite attribute, and then maybe you have email, okay? which we said we are supposed to indent to the right. And then also you have um, 
let's say a postal address so what happens for us to deal with this because we said that in er modeling you we have to make sure that all attributes are single they are single or they are atomic so in this case address is not atomic because it's a composite attribute so what do you do with composite attributes is instead of recording this address the way it is you only record the components of the composite attribute so in this case you record email okay the components and then you record um address sorry postal address postal ad because you can only have one po you can only represent one postal address and then also you can put a physical address let's say you stay in Chanja or you stay wherever so that's the so this is how you deal with a composite attribute by only re recording the components of the composite attribute and then when you're looking at the multi-valued attribute remember we said that you have a multi-valued attribute if you have a multi-valued attribute let's say uh, uh, phone phone number okay phone number where you are supposed to record let's say one two you have to record at least a phone number but up to a maximum of three phone contacts now this one here is a multi-valued attribute so how do we deal with multi-valued attribute we said that you remove this multi-valued attribute and you create an entity you create for it an entity a separate entity which is going to be a with entity so that way that entity is going to reference the primary entity which is student so in this case what you do for example you create another entity so we create another entity that we are going to call that we are going to call phone number and then this phone number of course has the number itself which is a primary key because remember each number is unique and then what is most important is we have to have range number because range number has to repre represent the person who owns the phone the phone who is who in this case is a student so we register the the registration number which is a primary key to this student so being a primary key to student implies that it's going to be a foreign key because we are using it to reference the to reference the primary the primary uh, relation in this case which is student so that means you create the, you get this and then you can connect you connect and then now we can say that okay uh, let's remove this first we need to remove this because we have created for it a relation so you need to remove that and then you get this and then you say a student has okay A student has phone number but remember in the in the in the in the earlier requirements they said you can have up to a maximum of three phone numbers so that means the multiplicity here is one to three so a student can have a maximum of one to three phone numbers however becoming hard and but a, a phone number belongs to only a particular student because you cannot have that phone number cannot be registered under two students so this is um, how we deal with <clears throat> the multi-valued attribute i've shown you how we deal with it with um um with composite attributes so a tertiary relationship is that particular relation is that particular relationship that exists where you have n number of um, 
<clears throat> a number of re relationships being represented or representing a particular entity type. So for those, but for, 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 for example, if you have a ternary relationship, okay, let's just create a fictitious ternary relationship. Remember, we said that a ternary, oh, sorry. We said a ternary relationship is that particular relationship that exists between where you have a participating entity, a relationship that is participating in more than three entity types. So let's assume, uh, please, I'm just assuming for the purposes of um, giving a an illustration, just for the purposes of an illustration, you could, for example, let us assume that um, you have you have um, a ternary relationship, which 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 in this case is is one relationship type that is participating in three entity types. So where you have such a scenario, it would mean that you have to break that relationship. And how do you break that relationship? We break that relationship by introducing a new relationship to that. Uh, sorry, you introduce a new entity type, okay? That will create that will act as an associative entity, but it will take all the 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 primary keys of the participating entities and put like how we did with this uh, associative entity to act as foreign keys. Let me give you an example here. Hold on. Now, what you see here is an example of a ternary relationship. You have three participating entities, that's patient, treatment, and physician. And this one here is an, a relationship type, only that this is a different notation of ER modeling. But this one here is a relationship type. So let us look at this as a ternary relationship. So once, how do you deal with a ternary relationship? How do you break it down? Because we have said that when you have a ternary relationship, when you have a, a quaternary, when you have an, a tertiary, all those relationships, you have to break them down into uh, different relations, but you have to create an associative entity that is going to act as a, a that is going to act as um, a binding relation for the for the three other entities, and then that associative entity is going to have the primary keys of the different uh, of the the primary keys of the of the primary relations. So to go back, I just brought this up as an example. So to go back here, so what you do again for you to address that that means. Uh, if, for example, you are going to, if you are taking the other example, that would mean you are going to create uh, the three entities, okay, that are participating, but then you will have to create an associative entity. Sorry. Let's take this down. So whatever I am doing here is just for demonstration purposes, just so that you try to understand what I'm talking about. So let us assume that these are this one and this one and this one are the ternary relationship participating in the in the relationship type called has. Let me even. Please make sure, please, I want you to know that I'm just doing this for purposes of demonstration. They mean, don't, don't take this very, um, very seriously. So let's assume that this is a ternary relationship. It's just an assumption. So what we do is you create, we can, you will create a new relationship called has, okay? A new relationship called has. This relationship is going to have cost code. This relationship is going to have another, another attribute called range number. Okay. 
this is also going to have another attribute called phone number. Now, all these are all these are it's going to it's going to have this is the associative entity that is going to have uh, a composite primary key. Now, this composite primary key again, these 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 attributes are foreign keys because they have got to reference their primary relations. So all these are foreign keys. So what happens is we remove this relationship, okay? And then we also remove that relationship. We remove this, okay? And then we remove that. And then what happens is all these three are going to reference this one. So we are going to have um, this one. Oh, sorry. Connector. We are going to have this one. This one, referencing that one. That is not supposed to be an arrow. It's supposed to be. It is supposed to be a line. Then we shall also have this one. And then we shall also have this. So this is how you will deal with a ternary relationship where you have one entity, one relationship type participating in three relationship type. What do you do? You create an associative entity which will have a composite primary key where you pull all the all the primary keys of the primary relationship and put them there. But this, uh, actually this goes away. This as well goes away. But these um, these uh, prime components of the primary key represent also they have they are representing a foreign key because they have to be referenced and then you create the different multiplicities that may so exist so this is just an illustration of 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 of, of how you deal with the ternary relationship so let's go back okay That's a ternary relationship. Now, dealing with um, specialization and generalization, okay? This one, we are going to discuss it in the next video.